Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today we're in the GT8. Firstly, because I want to take it for a drive because it's only got 119 miles on the clock, so it needs to be driven a little bit more. But secondly, I want to shoot a fuel for thought, talking a little bit about the cars coming out this year. There are an awful, awful lot of them. We've got the Geneva Motor Show and the Frankfurt Motor Show. We've got hypercars and we have a whole flurry of new supercars. Headlined, of course, by the two big ones from the title of this video that I think are going to be very interesting to see how they compare. The McLaren 720S and the Lamborghini Huracan Performante. But firstly, let me fire the GT8 up. That is a noise that I will never, ever, ever, ever get bored of. So, I'm just going to go for a little cruise, 119 miles. Now, I brought it out just now and it was beautifully sunny. Then it started raining on me, so the car is now a complete mess because of the way it has the cutaways behind the front arches and all of the sort of diffuser stuff, basically dirt goes everywhere. And at this time of year, for some reason, we just have grime wherever you look. Every bit of tarmac anywhere in England, oh, traffic announcement, let's turn that off. Any bit of tarmac anywhere is covered in mud. So it's a complete disaster, which is basically why I've barely driven this car because I kind of want to enjoy or only take it out every time I want to drive it. So, so far that's only allowed me to do 119 miles, but I'm sure it won't be long because it's not a garage queen until that reaches a much bigger number. So let me pull away with my good old six speed manual and the titanium exhaust system that I love a lot. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So let's talk about these two cars then. The two big ones that are coming out this year. We have the McLaren, the P14, that's the code name, the replacement for the Super Series, the replacement for the 12C, the 650S, the 675LT, and also technically the MSO HS and a bunch of other sort of special edition derivatives that have come out um, over the course of the lifespan. It's been about five or six years, so it's about time that sort of model gets a refresh, gets a new introduction. And the code name, or the name we're hearing at the moment is 720S, which will represent 720 horsepower. That's not necessarily the final name. Um, an S for the sort of sport version, not the C for comfort, like you have from 570S or 540C. So McLaren have this sort of structure, the Super Series, the Ultimate Series above, and the Sports Series below. I've driven a lot of the Sports Series cars as sort of test cars, the 540C, the 570S, the 570 GT. Um, Super Series cars, of course, you know I've owned four of them. Um, the 12C, the 650S, the 675 LT Coupe, and the 675 LT Spider. The Ultimate Series, I very much dream of, but the P1 and the P1 GTR. So they've always used these code names, the P double digit code names. P11 was the 12C, P12 was the P1, P13 was the Sport Series, now P14 is the new Super Series, the 720S. P15, for what it's worth, is some upcoming hypercar or Ultimate Series car, so that's going to be quite exciting in the future as well. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up right now, should let me turn my indicator off because that's going to get annoying. Um, is because you might have seen a spy shot of this car in the last couple of days. Um, it's been all over the internet. Um, I've certainly seen it from about 100 million places uh, on my computer. And I think it's rather unfortunate that somebody has gone to what we know was a private or embargoed event, and taken a photo and taken the decision to put it all over the internet. Or maybe they've sent it to someone else and that someone else has put it all over the internet. But I think it's a pretty douchey move because you've stolen McLaren's thunder by doing that. And at the end of the day, we're all now looking at a spy shot that doesn't look great because it's taken with a potato. The angle's completely off um, and you can't really tell that much about what's going on. So wait for the press photos because I've seen a bit more of the car and I think it's really rather special. Um, what we have seen, um, the orange paintwork that resembles the McLaren F1. There's a nice picture of the two cars together, a 720S, or well, that photo underneath the McLaren F1. And you can see some sort of design cues that have carried on. We know it has these new special kind of doors, um, like the F1 that open up from the roof and a bit of roof panel opens up with them, which is gonna make it interesting in the future when the spider comes along. But this car, 720S, 720 horsepower, I think that's a given. We can assume the weight is going to be down from the 13, 38 kilos of the 650S. It probably won't be as light as the LT, but we're probably talking high 12s, maybe 1280, 1290 kilos. That is ridiculously little. And without knowing the precise sum, it's going to give you a power to weight of somewhere near 600 horsepower per tonne, which is insane. Um, it's gonna be very, very quick. I presume kind of like how you go from 458 Speciale to 488 with uh, Ferrari, Probably the new car isn't going to be as exciting to drive, but it will be faster than the old one. So the 720S will probably be faster than the 675LT was. 
but probably or possibly won't have the same engagement. I don't know quite how McLaren are doing it. It has a similar kind of wing design. Well, actually, it has an, a new step. Um, I think from the photo they launched their own sort of official teaser that it was coming and you can see that the wing can sit up as well as pivot so that's going to be quite exciting when we see that um, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing a lot more of it and I think it's going to be blisteringly quick with a lot of new technology I love McLaren for all the technology and engineering but that's why this car has come out some might say too soon it's been five or six years they're developing so fast and one of the craziest things don't forget the 12C was the first car the new McLaren Automotive company had created five and a half years ago they have already made the p1 the 675 lt p1 gtr and are competing with the absolute best to even be in the same sentence as porsche and ferrari that quickly is something out of this world no one else has done it i think the only other car company that's gone anywhere similar to that is tesla obviously a different kind of car completely different um i'm clearly going past some, some running event right now um but tesla and mclaren pretty much the only two that have come from nowhere to mainstream very 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 quickly um, and this, the sort of capabilities of these cars is out of this world so I'm looking forward to seeing what the 720s can actually achieve because I think it's going to be something pretty pretty spectacular now I apologize for the slight squeaking that is all the dirt in the brakes which is really annoying um, now let's talk about Lambo and the Hurricane Performante so for the hardcore version of the Hurricane they're going with the Performante name rather than the Superleggera name I believe that's what all the sort of talk is um, we've seen some spy shots of the car out testing out of the Nürburgring. Um, it's got a wing at the rear, some active aerodynamics, um, and a bunch of other upgrades that I'm sure we'll discover about but don't know yet. I would expect the name to be LP640, LP650, um, up from the LP610 of the standard Hurricane or the LP580 of the rear-wheel drive Hurricane. So maybe an extra 30, 40 horsepower. Um, we're hearing rumours that it might have smashed the 918 Spider's track time at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Now, we've got to wait for some confirmation of that, but if so, it is clearly astonishingly quick. Um, I think these two cars, although the Hurricane is the track-focused version, sorry, the Performante is the track-focused version of the Hurricane, whereas the 720S is the mainstream model, they're both going to be similar kind of prices, touch over £200,000, both competing very much in the same industry, um, so it's going to be quite exciting to see how that goes. And I've got quite a few friends who have ordered both of them. But I guess I'm intrigued to know, which are you guys more excited about? Is it the McLaren 720S or is it the Hurricane Performante? Now, just as a sort of heads up, I have not e ordered either of them. I need to clarify that because I know everyone will assume I have. I have not ordered the 720S, um, even though it would be my sort of fifth in a row McLaren. Because one, I love my LT Spider. It's completely built to me it's very dramatic and it's just a seriously awesome car two i worry about a brand new 720s and its ability to perhaps not have technical issues brand new because i think they've done they'll have done quite a lot of technology and i'm not i need a car that's really reliable um so i'm, I'm a little bit hesitant on that front um and also the price um i worry that there could be a lot of room for depreciation new mclarens in general that aren't limited series have not had the best curves uh, depreciation curves as i'm sure you know from fellow youtubers talking about it um, so i'm a little bit hesitant on that front that's not to say i wouldn't have one in the future the hurricane performante well firstly my problem with lamborghinis is always how firm they are and how uncomfortable the seats are the ride is spectacularly hard and basically they do my back in um so i can't ever do a long journey in it and i'm kind of well i've seen a spy there's a spy shot as well of the seats and they look rigid as you could imagine um so that's not for me but also i'm kind of twisted by the purpose of the hurricane in general because it's sort of so usable to drive in terms of the, the sort of ease of which the gearbox is pulling away maneuvering parking etc but then it has no luggage space so it's the least practical thing in the world um the bonnet is like 95 liters or something which basically barely lets you fit you can't even fit a small suitcase in there um to let this person go in front of me because I've been following a police car for ages as you might have seen which I never like never fun you just feel guilty especially in a car this noisy um, turns a lot of heads that's for sure um, so the Hurricane is a bit of a split uh, personality I can bet it is going to be insane to drive and the sound it will make well even the race exhaust on the normal Hurricane when I went out to HRO and Lamborghini Pangborn to go for a ride in it and a drive was something special so I would expect that the uh, Hurricane Performante is going to be quite incredible um, as a sound and a driving experience. Um, so it'll be interesting. Let me know in the comments down below which of those two interest you more. 
Um, but it's also a year for a lot of other cars, a lot of other cars. And let's start with the other sort of highlight manufacturers, Ferrari. This year we're gonna have the F12M, the update to the Ferrari F12. And I sort of guess this is gonna go like the movement from the FF to the GTC4 Lusso. We'll probably have an introduction of quad tail lights, um, an upgrade of power, but overall it will more be a sort of facelift than a whole new model, I would guess. Um, I'm just gonna put my foot down here because... Wow, I do love the noise of this car. <laughs> um, Probably power for the F12M is gonna be quite a talking point because the F12 had 740 PS, the F12 TDF had 780 PS, and I wouldn't be too surprised if the F12M, whatever its final name is, comes out breaking the 800 mark. 800 horsepower in a GT car. The world is losing its marbles. Um, other cars we have this year, the new 911 GT3, the 991.2 GT3 is gonna come out. Um, that will be quite exciting, I'm sure, as well. Uh, Rumours say there's going to be the manual option in it. So you'll have a manual, um, which I've heard will mean you have no wing on it. If you order the manual, you don't get the wing. And if you order the PDK car, uh, you have a traditional GT3 wing. So I'm looking forward to seeing more about that with the 4-litre um, engine in it. Um, we've got hypercar front, Pagani. We've got the Huayra Roadster. Now, Pagani sold all the Huayras, and we already know they've pre-sold all 100 Huayra Roadsters. But there are some design modifications, because obviously the Huayra had gullwing doors, so the new one has to have normal doors. Um, McLaren are going to have that problem with P14 as well, by the way. The Spider won't work so well. Um, but we'll be seeing that for the first time, even though it's probably been ready for like two years now. Um, but then, we have the two heavyweight hypercars. And this is going to be really, really exciting, because we have the Aston Martin AM RB001 in its final production form. I presume we're going to see this year. First, we're going to see the interior of it. Um, Aston Martin and Red Bull's collaboration. And then secondly, we have the Mercedes AMG 50th anniversary hypercar, currently codenamed Project One. Now, we should see the production car of that at Frankfurt later in the year, and maybe a concept um, a little bit sooner. And I guess those are the two main hypercars of this year. The McLaren BP23 uh, 3C hypercar is going to be a little bit further afield. Uh, we also have Williams F1 Engineering hypercar, the Dendrodium, um, they're making uh, with a Singapore company. Um, that's going to be revealed as well. Uh, that looks pretty cool, actually, if you Google it. Um, so it's going to be a year of some very exciting cars. And also, we've got the Aventador S. I haven't even mentioned that. The Lamborghini have revealed it, unveiled it. 740 horsepower, not quite as much as the SV, but some active aero and more downforce and some four-wheel uh, steering with rear-wheel steering as well. So the Aventador S um, is another exciting car for this year. It's literally supercars everywhere, and I'm sure that's not everything um, by any stretch uh, of the imagination. That was a bit tight. Got to watch out for how much carbon there is on this car after all. Um, so 2017 is the year of the new supercar. It's going to be moving things on. Um, power going up significantly in all of these cars. Um, as is technology, active aero, um, and everything that goes into making them even quicker. Um, so I apologize if you've had some frustration and annoyance from the sunshine at any point in this video, or perhaps all the way through this video. Low sun plus rain clouds equals a complete mess, as does this Zafira in front of me who doesn't know what he's doing. Come on, on we go, on we go. That van was bold. Anyway, London drivers, weekend drivers, I should say, it's so much better in the week in London when uh, you just have people who drive here every day and they know what they're doing. Um, but on that, on that slightly less positive note, let's return back to the main topic. 720S Hurricane Performante, which is it for you? Let me know in the comments down below. Which would you most like to see me get if I was gonna get one of them in the future? For now though, I'm gonna go put this back in the garage. I've done a grand total of three miles during this video. Woohoo, very exciting. Um, and I'm going on to some other stuff. So this year, it's had to be very exciting on the supercar front, also on the uh, adventures and stuff I've got planned as well. So stay tuned for all of that. That's it for now though, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you with my next Fuel for Thought sometime very soon. Cheers.